like to call the meeting of the local agency formation commission together held in this board of chain supervisors chambers in the county administrative building on february 28th 2018 5 p.m roll call please commissioner fowler present commissioner scribner here commissioner sanders here commissioner rivera commissioner mello here Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner McGuire? Here. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Garola? We're all here, except those who aren't here. Okay, I'd like to ask Commissioner Couch to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you. Okay, the next item, number three, is approval of the minutes of the January 17th, 2018 meeting. Chairman, we have a, Chairman, we have a change in the um, minutes, as well as some echo. <laughs> uh, in the Rosemont Community Service District Municipal Service Review, it says that the Municipal Service Review as a notice exemption for the West Kern Water District is not for the West Kern Water District, it's for the Rosemont Community Service District. So we will make that change. Okay. And thank you, Chairman, for pointing that out to us. <laughs> You're welcome. Approval of the minutes with that change. And I'll second. Chuck, was that you? It was Dave. Dave and you. made the motion, I second. Thank you. Okay, public comments. This vote? portion of the, oh, I guess we better, hadn't we? Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to item number four, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Okay, seeing none, we'll go to number five. Notice public hearings. 1713, north of the River Sanitary District number one. Mr. Knox. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Before you is the uh, North River Sanitation Number One uh, Annexation Number One Hundred Nine. It's also a detachment from County Service Area Seventy One, which makes this makes this a reorganization. Today, you're uh, considering the proposed annexation of approximately nineteen point five six acres into the North of the River Sanitation District and detaching from CSA Seventy One. The proposed area is located on the southeast corner of Venus Lane and Seventh Standard Road. The proposal has 100% landowner consent. The applicants have requested notice of hearing and protest hearing be waived. CEQA, uh, there's a negative declaration that was prepared and adopted by North of the River. And if approved, uh, this proposal is subject to conditions recommended by executive officer. This proposal is currently within the boundaries of CSA 71, but no services are provided because the land is, is vacant. The property owners would like to develop the property in the future and north of the river has a sewer line running down the seven, running down seven standard road that can serve the property. The line for the, for the CSA is some distance away. Therefore, the county would like to detach. The applicant has signed an identification agreement. There will be no tax increase involved with this. Uh, there's some interesting zoning on this one. The north area, which is approximately 6.5 uh, acres fronting 7 Standard Road, is C2 PD PE General Commercial Precise Development Combining, Petroleum Extraction Combining. And then the south area, approximately 13 acres, is zoned NR PD Natural Resources. And there are five acres of precise development combining. 
uh, and no zone changing is anticipated at, uh, in the near future. This annexation is consistent with a general plan, transportation plans, or specific plans. It's consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. The assessor's parcels are, are they conform. There is no uh, functional overlap. Uh, that will be true as this is a reorganization because of the detachment of 71. It will not, there will not be an overlap. Um, there is not a municipal service review uh, as this annexation is within the district's sphere of influence. Uh, and there is an adequate, adequate water supply to the area. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. And we have not received any, any feedback. And again, the annexation to the North River Sanitation District has 100% landowner consent. The district has requested the notice hearing and protest bring, hearing be waived. Is my recommendation as executive officer to waive the notice hearing and protest hearing and approve this reorganization. Okay, thank you. Is there any member of the public who would like to speak on this item? Commissioners? Okay, then I need a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, with Commissioner Scrivener making the motion, Commissioner McGuire seconding the motion. Let us cast our vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, public project review. I see nothing on my agenda. Does that mean there is nothing? Okay. Correct. Next item is commission items. Again, I don't see anything, but I do have a commission item. If I can pick it up again. Commissioner Scribner. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair Mello, and I appreciated uh, the opportunity to get to serve as chair for last year, and thank you very much for the plaque. Appreciate uh, staff getting that together for me. Thanks so much. Okay. We'll go to number eight, general business. A, approval of claims list number 1802. Need a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sanders, second by Commissioner McGuire. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, item B, reconfirmation of City of Tatchby sphere of influence. Mr. Knox? Uh, is this number, oh. uh, is this B? This, yeah. is, this is the City of Tatchby. Yeah, I have to recuse myself, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. They're my client. Correct. Thank you. Give the map for commission. Um, the staff report gives a complicated explanation to a simple problem. I'm going to show you two maps. One will have the correct sphere of influence, and one will not. The first map was created in 1989. That was it. No, that was the. There you go. Okay. Oh, that's the, the 2017 one. Yes. Um, this is the correct map. If you see, well, you did see. That's the correct map. <laughs> okay. This is the correct map. And there's an area that is northwest, mostly west of Highway 58 and um, Tucker Road. It's kind of bulging out there. Um, that is the correct map. Um, Unfortunately, and that was, that was approved by the commission as a sphere of influence back in 1989. After 89, we had a map made, and that's not it. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it is. That is. And you can see that the green dotted line does not cover that area. Um, and several items were approved by this commission with that map, even though it's, it's, it's incorrect. 
and we'll show you a better here. bigger picture of it here. That's the, that's the area that was approved in uh, the city came to us and wanted to annex that area in 2016, which this commission approved. But the map that was included, included the sphere of influence that was not, did not have that area. Both the city and LAFCO knew that area was in the sphere of influence, it's just we used the wrong map. And we both recognize that. Uh, in your packet is a letter from the uh, city of Tehachapi that acknowledges that and asks us to reconfirm the sphere, uh, which we're doing here today. So it's, it's very simple. You're approving something that was already approved in 1989. And what we need to do is go back and fix our files so all of them show the correct sphere of influence. So there's no question going forward. Okay. Uh, so it is my recommendation uh, to reconfirm the sphere of influ influence as presented and approved by the current LAFCO Commission in 1989 and amend the 2007, 2014, and 2016 files to reflect the correct sphere of influence for the city of Tehachapi. Okay. Do we have anyone in the public who'd like to speak to this matter? Commissioners? I will move, um, excuse me, I'll move approval of the staff's recommendation, please. Second. Cast your vote. By the way, that was a motion by Commissioner Scribner, second by Commissioner Fowler. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. C, Kern Lafco staff vacation modifications. Mr. Knox. Chairman, the, the Lafco handbook currently lists the specific vacation days that staff is authorized to take. Previously, these days matched the County of Kern holiday schedule until this fall. The Kern County Board of Supervisors authorized the addition of time off between Christmas and New Year's for county employees. There is no reference to the county in the section of the handbook. It is my understanding that the executive is the understanding of the executive officer that it was the intention of the commission to follow the county holiday schedule. If that is true, then it's my recommendation to modify the staff handbook to include a reference to the holiday schedule of County of Kern and expand the Kern LAFCO holiday schedule to include work days between Christmas and New Year's Day. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the public who would like to address this item? Commissioners? Yes, ma'am. That was only as I recall, Supervisor Scrivener will correct me if I'm wrong, that was a negotiated item for something, but it was only for this calendar year and last and the next calendar year. Am I right about that? Yes, you're correct. Yeah. So maybe your policy ought to be, if that's continued, word it somehow so that you don't start taking between Christmas and New Year's off every year if we don't continue to do that, I guess. I can, I can do that. Okay. Or, or if, if, if staff, um, Madam Chair, may I? If, yes. if staff wanted to, um, if, you wanted, if you wanted that to be the ongoing policy of LAFCO, you, could you do that independent of what the county does? I believe you could, could you not? Yes, we could. So that, that may be what you want to do. I mean, I know that that's the, our, our thought process was it's a very, it's a very, um, quiet time. There's not a lot of activity, and so um, and it was it was just a way in which we could offer um, a, an additional benefit to our employees in an environment where we, you know, unfortunately um, weren't able to provide raises because of the fiscal crisis we're in. With with LAFCO, if you feel that that is if that is a a period of time where you don't have anyone coming in and it's you know it's quiet and there isn't any uh, any need to be open, then I I think that you might want to consider coming forward with a policy that is just for, for LAFCO going forward, but I'll leave that to you to determine how you want to do it. Thank you. You can do that today if you like. I'm, it's, that's perfectly acceptable to me. I mean, I, I know full well that that period of time between Christmas and New Year's does not have a lot of business going on, um, at least in the public sphere. It's and very so, difficult to find people between those dates to, 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 <laughs> to, to do business. And a lot of that's taken off anyway. And so I, I'm perfectly, perfectly happy to make that change. 
um, for LAFCO going forward, but I'll, I'll leave that open to um, discussion, of course, with the rest of uh, the commissioners. I think I'll also point out that my contract, since I'm not, I'm under contract, not, not under, as a staff, my contract reads the holiday schedule is consistent with the county's schedule. So that's, that's the way mine reads. So this last year I actually got the days off, but the staff did not. Um, so that would make it equal between me and staff so we'd both be gone at the same time. You're not changing your, your agreement. No, my agreement's going to stay the same. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Although in two years, uh, if the county decides not to give those, those days again, I will be back to working those days or taking vacation time during that, during that period. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then that's going to change any, unless somebody wants to make a motion to what Commissioner Scribner just stated, and a second, and vote on that, or vote just on the modifications that Mr. Knox had on his. Well, can I ask a question? The policy is that your staff should have the exact same vacation schedule that the county staff has. Is that, is that right? That's your policy? My understanding is that that's a policy that's been around LAFCO going back to when LAFCO was more aligned with the county. So it's going back years that there has been consistency between the county's holiday schedule and LAFCO's. But in our handbook, it actually doesn't say that. It just lists out the specific dates that are the holidays. Why don't you bring back a change to your handbook that removes the dates and inserts the, the phrasing that talks about whatever the county's holiday schedule is. Okay. That doesn't help you for 2017, but no. <laughs> help you for 2018. <laughs> Okay, you're going to make that a motion? Is that a motion? If you need a motion, I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? So just, just so I'm clear, if, if you do that, if you bring it back, and then we don't extend that, um, that same benefit after 2018, in, in 2019, then you would go back to not having the, 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 your staff would not have those holiday days if the county did not, correct, if you change the handbook? And so, so Mike, let, let me, let's do this. Let me bring back a couple options. Okay. One, just, of, one I, of which I is know. to follow exactly what the county does. And if the county decides after 2018 not to provide those days, that would be one option for the commission. Another option would be um, to make it a permanent or not that it's ever permanent, but right. uh, that would be an option or an option would be to not give staff those days. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm comfortable with that. And, and I will put language together so it looks like it would in the handbook. Okay. So you will all see that. So uh, uh, just a question, are we, is this gonna be tabled then until it's brought back? Okay, so that's the motion for table? I, I think, are we, are we gonna continue the item or table it? I don't know what, we, we usually say continue the item at the, well, at the county, but yeah. I don't know, I don't let, know what. Let me withdraw that motion. Okay. okay. Um, Ms. Um, Council, do we need any kind of a motion, or no. do we just give staff staff has direction to come back? The chair can continue it unless there's some objection. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. So item C is going to be brought back at next month's meeting. Okay, item D, results of Roseman Community Services District protest hearing. Mr. Knox. Chairman, uh, recently there was a protest hearing for the Rosamond uh, Community Service District. This was application number 1707, annexation number 22. The commission approved the annexation for Rosamond Community Service District at the January meeting, contingent on the results of a scheduled protest hearing. Notices were published per the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act, and the protest hearing was held at the boardroom of the Rosamond Community Service District on Monday, February 26th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Three people came to the hearing. 
two were uh, for mutual water companies that will now be part of the CSD. They're going to be uh, merged into that. And one gentleman who has his own private well and just wanted to make sure that the government wasn't coming in to take his well away from him. Uh, so there were no protests filed either in person or through the mail, and the annexation can move forward and we can continue with the completion process. Uh, it is my recommendation uh, to accept the results of the protest hearing by resolution and receive and file. Okay, thank you. Item E, Redevelopment Board Special District Member Election Results. Oh. I, 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 did we need a motion to receive and file? On that item? I'm, I'm sorry. I believe so. Okay, I'll make a motion to receive and file, Madam Chair. Thank for you. Item, for item D. Second. Okay, Commissioner Scrivener made the motion to receive and file, and Commissioner Couch seconded that. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go to the Redevelopment Board Special District Member Election Results, an informational item. Yes. Mr. Knox. Colonel Lafco, on behalf of the Independent Special District Selection Committee, has performed an election of a special district member to the County Redevelopment Board. This election was conducted by mail as it is difficult to get a majority of the special districts in one place at one time to get a majority. Nominations went out in December with a deadline for nominations well over the 30-day minimum ending on January 19, 2018. Uh, provisions in the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Reorganization of Act of 2000 indicate that if only one nominee is garnered, then there's no need for an election. And we received only one nomination. Tim Unruh will be the special district representative on the current uh, redevelopment oversight board. Mr. Unruh has been involved with special districts for many years as both a board member and as general manager of the Kern Cemetery District Number 1. Okay, thank you. Do we need the public to speak on that, or that's just an informational item? Correct. Okay. All right. F, legislative update. Another informational item. Mr. Yes. Knox. The California legislature is working hard to improve the lives of Californians through more and more legislation. That's what they do. Uh, the deadline for introducing new bills was 10 days ago. Well, not really because there are ways around that provision and they can continue to introduce bills. Um, welcome to our legislature, right? But the deadline does give us our first real glance at what changes could possibly be coming our way. CalAFCO has provided the, uh, the list of bills that are, they are currently tracking, and I have highlighted a few issues of interest in the memo. I don't think it's necessary to go through them today. Today, the purpose is just to make you informed, and as the process moves forward, I may come back to the commission and ask for further clarification and possible stance on specific bills. Uh, I am now an alternate member on the CalAFCO Legislative Committee, and I am tracking these bills and will report to you any progress towards resolving some of these issues. Uh, so far, I do not see, a need, see an approach from CalAFCO that would be inconsistent with this commission. Okay, thank you. And the last item, G, Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items. Again, informational. Yes. Mr. Knox. I have several items today. Uh, first is the budget. Uh, we are currently working on the budget for 2018-2019. Uh, the preliminary budget will be presented to you at the March meeting. If there are, any, if there are no major is issues, I plan to bring it back for final consideration at the April meeting. If additional time is needed, uh, we can bring the final budget, budget back in May. Uh, that's the last chance we have to have it completed before the June 15th deadline. We have two special districts that have been active for some time that I have been doing some research on as far as dissolving them. Um, neither has a board of directors, received tax dollars, nor has provided any services. The, do, the two have different circumstances surrounding their inactive status. One is an irrigation district and the other is a resource conservation district. 
Currently, I'm looking for potential state funds to pay for the dissolution of these districts. In addition, there is a possibility that there is another district that will annex within the boundaries of the community service district. The irrigation district has one property owner within its boundaries, and that property owner happens to be another special district. Um, is my hope that the services that were once thought to be provided will, will now become a reality with the dissolution and taking over these boundaries by these new district, by the current districts. And I'm working with these districts to see if I can make that happen. Um, these inactive districts have been known for some time. Last year, a new state law went into effect that allows for a streamlined process for dissolving inactive districts. It can still be a little expensive if you have a consultant, um, but it, it's still quite a bit easier than it used to be. Uh, but so now that that law is in place, there should be considerably less time and effort needed to complete the study and get the inactive districts off the books. When I have a more definitive accounting of the cost, I will come back to you with something more formal and possibly include the cost in the preliminary budget. Um, again, I'm trying to get state funds to get this uh, completed. The state has been very interested in inactive districts and getting them off the books and also consolidating districts that we have many small districts that, uh, not just in Kern County, but across the state that are struggling and probably need some economy of size to, to, operate, to operate well. So the state has been looking at that pretty closely uh, the last couple of years. Coming up in May, we have an open seat for the special districts. Uh, notices have been sent to all the special districts requesting nominations for the special district seat currently being held by Commissioner Sanders. As you might remember, the seat was held by, held by Mel McLaughlin until his unt untimely passing. At the time, we held an election and Commissioner Sanders was the only person uh, to be nominated. And per our local LAFCO policy, that seat does not reset with a new four-year term, but Commissioner Sanders filled the last part of Mel's term. Uh, Nominations need to be submitted by March 30th. Uh, so once we get those nominations, if there's more than one, we'll go out to, to an election to get that done. We also have a public member seat that's coming up. Uh, the term for the restricted public member seat is also up in May. Noticing requirements are that we publish the, the opening in the paper. Uh, we will soon do that. We will also have it in the, at, on the Kern LAFCA website and the county website. And we will be sending out the notice to cities and special districts. Elected officials and board members of special districts are not eligible for the seat, but oftentimes there are people who are civically minded that are a good fit that attend those meetings regularly and those folks know who those, those, those folks are. At the last meeting, I mentioned that I need to do a little more research on who the voting members are for that seat. Uh, I spent some time looking at state code in our process. Those eligible to vote on this seat are the two county supervisors and the two special district uh, commissioners. The city and other public members are not eligible to vote on this seat. This will be a public process. In the past, we have invited applicants to speak before the commission and allow the commissioners to ask questions before voting on a new commissioner or a returning commissioner and an alternate. Uh, there is no time limits or term limits for LAFCO commissioners uh, other than for city seats. For both the special district seat and the public member seat, the incumbents have the ability to put their name in for nomination. In May, we will also be changing the city seat. Uh, Commissioner Garola will be termed out. Uh, the city selection committee recently met and put forward Liz Morris from the city of Delano. While it's not specific policy, there is a custom of rotating by cities alphabetically to fill the seat. This, this, of course, excludes the city of Bakersfield, who has a seat on the commission as the most populated city in the, in the county. So if you're wondering why we're going from Arvin to Delano and missing Bakersfield, we, we do know our alphabet, um, but they already have a seat. They can't have two, darn it. Uh, also at the um, city selection committee, an alternate member was, was put forward. Um, Gene Stump from California City has been the choice of the committee, so he will be the alternate. 
I also want to point out that there will be a staff uh, workshop that Cal AFCO puts on. That's April 11th through 13th in San Rafael, and all three of your LAFCO staff members will be attending. And our next meeting is March 28th, uh, 5 p.m. here at the Board of Supervisors Chambers. And that's the end of my report. Okay, thank you. And if there's no more business, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you for coming out and drive safely home.